Time we took a look at a relatively tamed index. Hello everyone, Monty here, Mark Analyst at IG with another technical cheat sheet video where we take a look at key technical indicators in order to formulate a technical overview. That way we can prep those strategies. Now, if you think the technical overview is gonna hold great, but some of you out there might agree to disagree on the matter, and that means that we need to have those strategies ready for when the overview fails. We're gonna be taking a look at it levels in both daily and weekly timeframes. As well as the sentiment, uh, though for this one, we don't have any data when it comes to COT speculators, so we are going to take a look at where they stand when it comes to key U.S. equity indices before flipping back and mapping sentiment onto the chart, as well as fundamental considerations for this week. So let's go ahead and get started. FTSE 100, and you take a look at the chart, and you're like, my goodness, is it ever going to get out of these ranges? But price for the time being, uh, not, uh, not above all its main uh, short-term weekly moving averages, but above, I should say just above when it comes to one of it, uh, one, all its main long-term weekly moving averages, a DMI that by one calculation is in negative territory, not just there yet by another in ADX that between 20 to 25, it really depends on what your classification is of trending. But if you take 25 and above, it's not quite there in trending territory just yet on the weekly time frame. And RSI nowhere near overbought or oversold and price falling off from the upper end of the band. You look at that and you go, wow, most of these are, are neutral. Doesn't that mean that combined with, you know, we don't have any sort of bull or bear channel. And that kind of means that we're looking at a more consolidatory overview. But keep in mind, especially on a weekly time frame, we haven't have always had controlled movement to and from the average. And that means that overall, you're looking at added caution whenever you're going against, which means that, you know, off the first resistance level, for example, you're selling via, after a significant reversal. So waiting for the level to sort of get breached. And then if it comes back, you can go ahead and initiate if you think that indeed it's going to move back towards an average or going for a buy, uh, buying after a significant uh, reversal off the first support, first support. Contrarians are going to be the opposite. You're going for breakout strategy. So buying off the first resistance, selling off the first support. But the thing is that when it comes to the weekly time frame, one thing to notice is that volatility seems to get a bit more volatility in the sense that whenever you have a very, very volatile week, which is happening after a lot of narrow or range bound uh, interweek uh, movement. A lot of times that means that you're going to see movements well above first or second resistance levels. And I'm talking about that kind of volatility. The week after, you're going, price isn't usually going to settle there. It's either going to, you're going to see a sort of recovery, which might take a week or two or three to, to occur, or you see another volatile move. So it's, vol, it's you know, it's, it's, it's calm, calm, calm. And then you got the storm, and then you got another storm, usually the week or combined. If you combine the next two weeks, it's, it's a storm afterwards that doesn't usually. Uh, give a chance for for weekly levels, which are still, you know, if you average it out, still relatively narrow to really catch up to what have been some recent volatile moves. So that's something to keep in mind if you're trading this in future times where you're looking back and you're saying, okay, that, you know, last week was a relatively volatile week. Now, there is also the matter of, okay, center of, if the first levels have been quite good in terms of being a center of gravity, why not making a move prior up to the first level? So buying it before it reaches the first resistance, selling it before it reaches the first support. There's also the matter of, okay, if initially it's going to provide a test or it, you know, if the resistance level is going to prove to be, you know, offer resistance at the first, in the beginning, but eventually, is there going to be follow through beyond it? Therefore, if I go in a little bit early, is there a chance? You look at, if you look at the uh, week on week uh, action, you know, on the weekly time frame, you'll notice that there have been some weeks where Going in early is going to cause failure, even if you take it up to the to the to the first levels. But on average, it has offered follow through eventually. So that's the idea behind it. It's that okay, there might be an initial test. You might even fail on one or two tries. But it, the idea is that is there going to be eventual follow through beyond these levels, especially? But it's obviously going to take a little bit more time. So what exactly are the are what's the distance between the RSP and the first levels? Again, as for this week, you're looking at the distance of 103 points. And when it comes to the stop loss. I say that always at your discretion because you want to weigh it up with whatever it is that your profit, whatever it is your reward's going to be. So you make sure your risk reward ratio is correct. But we're looking at around 51 points. So that's when it comes to the weekly time frame. Let's zoom into the daily time frame. We can see that even here, you know, at the end of the day, coming back towards an average. But the technical box is actually for uh, for the start of the week. We're talking from Monday as a daily, matching up entirely with the weekly. So once again, looks the same, although three of them can shift with very with, with Grady's uh, the price with respect to short term moving averages when price actually came up to the upper end of the band you had all you had three of them flashing green and briefly you had a time where where uh, you had a positive DMI cross now it's back into negative but you look at the other stuff pretty much matching up with the weekly and that means that once again we're looking at a consolidatory overview clearly suffering from price indicator proximity that can tilt uh, a few of these technical boxes and it all just means that once again it's another cautious Approach. Although one thing to note is that although the strategy is going to be the same, so conformance are going to be you're selling after a significant uh, uh, reversal off the first resistance, buying uh, after a significant reversal off the first support, contrarians are once again going for, for breakout strategies. 
Um, one thing you want to notice that the patterns day to day is that you've got one or two days where it's going up, one or two days coming back down. You know, we're in this phase right now where you're getting a little bit of follow through from day to day. And that just means that you're going to have to be a little bit more cautious because remember we talked about the weekly time frame, for example, where it's calm, 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 hit. Uh, when it comes to daily time, it's sort of like calm, calm, and a couple, you know, a couple sessions here, a couple sessions back down, a couple sessions here. And that means you want to time that, even though we're looking at this just for, for the day itself. Um, and that means that sometimes people are saying, okay, well, if that's the case, why don't I go for, instead of working off the first levels, why not work off of the sev second levels for, for a certain session? Um, but the thing to keep in mind when it comes to the, sec uh, the second support, second resistance, and a lot of times the action is around the first but the second can can be considered, but maybe you want to go just be, with the with the daily time frame that you know if it is a sizable volatile move, maybe consider after reversal instead of going for outright fades where uh, those are much more likely to get stopped out. And why is that the case? Because if you look at the the you calculate the, the amount between the RSP and the first and for Monday, you're looking at around 40. Though if you're looking at watching this on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth, you just readjust the RSP and you do want to take it up a notch when it comes to the gap between the RSP and first, depending on what volatility is expected on that day. I'll talk about that when we get to the fundamental considerations, as well as the stop loss, which again, depending on your risk reward ratio at around 20. But notice how from the RSP to the first, it's 40. So then from the RSP to the second, you're looking about 80, which isn't too far off what we're seeing between the RSP and the first on the weekly time frame. So what about when it comes to sentiment? COT speculators, by the way, when it comes to QS indices, mixed story. They were majority by NASDAQ 100 for quite some time, shifted to the middle, according to the most recent report. Still majority sell when it comes to the S&P 500 for reasons that I mentioned in the technical cheat sheet in that, uh, for the S&P 500. And the Dow, which has had the highest correlation uh, when it comes to momentum as uh, momentum trades and, and, and what we're seeing in, with the recent moves, uh, we're seeing them start to pull back just a little bit. So still heavy buy territory, but pulling back a little bit. When it comes to IG clients on our end, majority sell all three. In fact, you look at... Uh, uh, the other uh, key indices, also extreme sell when it comes to the DAX and the Australia 200, though, though when it comes to the ASX, it, it might actually drop just because we had a pullback in price that's giving a chance for some, some of the shorts to get out. Whereas when it comes to the FTSE, it actually spent most of its time in majority buy territory. Intra week, it actually it was a majority buy territory, but week on week started last week, a majority sell 57%, very close to the middle with a slight sell 51%. Buy is going to go in and plot that, plot that onto the chart. Blue dotted line, IG Klein sentiment as percent long, looking at the left axis. The, this red dotted line is the 50-50. Whenever you see the dotted line go above, the majority buy. Whenever it goes below, majority short. Majority of the time, staying in majority buy territory, anticipating or hoping that, you know, when, when are the price gains going to come when it comes to the FTSE, as we've seen when, when, it, you know, when it comes to the other key indices that, that, uh, that I mentioned. And if you zoom into the daily time frame, it gets a little bit clearer in the sense that, you know, every time it goes down, they go to majority buy territory. Tr trading what have been averages and the range trading has gotten a little bit aggressive over here within this new zone right over here. Um, but but like I mentioned, going towards slight sell, this is a daily time frame. So last week, you know, started a uh, majority sell. And then when you had the pullback right away, going to majority buy, and then we had this gains over here and then going back into majority sell territory. What about some fundamental things to consider for, for this week? We do have UK labor data, including wages, which is on Tuesday, or if you're watching this on Tuesday, already passed. Uh, we've got plenty of data on Wednesday, which is going to include GDP for the month of January. Hopes are that it's going to shrug off the contraction and offer some expansion. you got consumer inflation expectations by the Bank of England on Friday. And speaking of the BOE, by the way, market pricing, courtesy of LSEG, anticipating the first rate cut by a major decent majority in August. It's very close to the middle in June. So depending on what we get between now and then, there's still a chance that June might offer a chance. But, you know, until then, for now, still in anticipating that the, real, the first uh, rate cut in this cycle is going to come in August. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Good luck out there.